Hello again. Um, so now we're on to the third episode of the series uh, where we're going to be looking at biodiversity and conservation. So now that we've gotten a general idea of what a system is and specifically what an ecosystem is, we're going to look at an important feature of ecosystems, which is biodiversity. So that will be our first task for today um, to define biodiversity. Um, we're then going to look at the origins of biodiversity, so a little bit on evolution and natural selection and speciation. We're going to see why it's under threat, um, and we're going to also talk about, we're going to consider conservation efforts and how that uh, kind of ties in with some things we talked about in topic one about your environmental value system and the, the different ways to value resources. So biodiversity is a broad umbrella concept, really, um, and it includes three subcomponents, habitat diversity, species diversity, and genetic diversity. And I've included this diagram here because really each kind of causes the next. So habitat diversity is the range of different habitats that are available in an ecosystem for species to live in. Um, and you can imagine that the more habitats are available, the more different, the different species will be able to thrive there. So because of habitat diversity, we get species diversity. And species diversity, contrary to popular belief, is not just the number of different species, but also their relative abundance, so their evenness. And we'll get back to that in the next slide as well. Um, and species diversity leads to genetic diversity. So the range of different genetic material that is present in a gene pool. Um, and again, that makes sense because the more different organisms you have, the more genes are gonna be represented by them. So you can see that biodiversity actually describes a range of different things, the habitat, the species, and the genes. So let's get back to those two components that I mentioned that make up the definition of species diversity. And those are species richness, the number of different species, and how even they are. So if you look at the diagram on the right, you can see that in the community one, we have pretty much exactly even um, proportions of species between them. So you've got 25% of A, B, C, and D. Whereas community two, one species is really dom dominating in the ecosystem, and that's species A. So 80% of the population is species A. Um, and you can po possibly understand that uh, community one shows you a more stable ecosystem because the habitat is able to sustainably uh, provide for four different species equally, and it doesn't have one species that's so vastly dominating of the area, as is the case in community two. Um, so it shows that the ecosystem is not able to support a wide variety of organisms. So the next thing I wanna bring your attention to are biodiversity hotspots. And as the name would suggest, these are areas uh, with very, very high biodiversity, uh, meaning they have a lot of different species uh, which are relatively even. Um, and these areas are in need of emergency conservation, not only because of their high biodiversity, and in fact, they are rich in many endemic plant and species that are found nowhere else on Earth, but also because of the demands that are put in these areas. And we'll get back to that in the next slide. Um, but we can look at an example being tropical rainforests, um, as is a lovely picture below. Um, and tropical rainforests are believed to be the home of half of all species on Earth. So that really shows you how important they are for global biodiversity um, and how important they are being the home of so many different species. Biodiversity hotspots are under threat uh, and a statistic to give you an idea of just how bad the threat is, approximately a football pitch is lost uh, every four seconds in the tropical rainforest. Um, and this is driven by timber demands, by soy demands, um, but recently, um, conservation efforts have started to educate people on tropical rainforest value as a carbon store. Um, and again, we'll get back to this concept of valuing resources in the coming topics. Um, but another thing to consider, you know, ESS is a, a political subject, um, is that many tropical rainforests and biodiversity hotspots in general are found in less economically developed countries than more economically developed countries or even newly industrialized countries. Um, 
And you may, you may consider the fact that in these countries, they have different priorities. They're focused on development and um, may not be focused on kind of conserving biodiversity as much as an MEDC that's already reached that stage of development. So that is something to consider now that we're getting to the more applied versions, um, more applied concepts in ESS. Um, so how does diversity exist? What brought this around? Um, well, of course, evolution. So evolution is the gradual change in the genetic character of a species uh, through many generations. Um, and it is based on natural selection, which is the fact that um, there is variation in a species and according to the environmental demands at a certain time, some organisms will be better able to survive, reproduce, pass on uh, their genes than others. And the environmental challenges that they face really um, kind of distinguish the character at that particular time. Um, and fitness in this case is a measure of reproductive success. Um, and these are the four conditions that are required for evolution. So variation, as I mentioned, that there needs to be different genetic character between the individuals. The fact that there's competition, so not all individuals will survive. And in fact, the more adapted, the better kind of suited to the environment will be the one that can pass, reproduce, pass on their offspring, and overall be selected for in terms of their traits. Um, so this, you can kind of imagine how this would bring about biodiversity because different species at different times are going to have to, to be adapted differently to the different environmental demands. The second process which brings about biodiversity is speciation. And speciation is the formation of a new species when populations of a single species get separated in some way. Um, and they, what essentially happens, evolve to different environmental demands uh, which means that if they get reintroduced, as you can see in the image uh, in this slide, they are so genetically different that they're no longer able to reproduce and no longer a species. They have um, separated into two separate species. And we can have several types of isolation, geographical, mechanical, behavioral, genetic. Um, the geographical can be caused by plate activity. So movement of the major tectonic plates that uh, are present on Earth. Um, and the reason that this can either separate or bring together populations is because they can create mountain ranges, um, rift valleys, and these can all, all isolate gene pools and cause speciation. So this is another source of biodiversity. Um, now, the IB want you to be aware that there have been five mass extinctions in the past all caused by abiotic factors. Um, and the evidence for this comes primarily from fossil records, which show that successive layers contain different species. Um, and this shows us that some change has occurred. Um, now, the types of extinction can be local, where a species is no longer present in one area where it used to be, Ecological, where there are so few members of the species left that it's no longer able to perform its natural ecological role. Or biological, when it's completely extinct um, and isn't found anywhere on Earth. Now, these five abiotic extinctions caused in the past have been due to climatic conditions, including ice ages, tectonic plate movements, er volcanic eruptions, and you can notice these are all abiotic, so they're non-living, not uh, human-caused. But right now, we are experiencing the first ever biotic mass extinction, which is caused by just one species, humans. The main driving factors are hunt overhunting, destruction of habitats, including deforestation, and the introduction of exotic species, which can completely destabilize an ecosystem. So below are just five examples of species that have been, have gone extinct because of human activity. Um, and that brings me to the factors that can make a species more prone to extinction. Um, and these are quite intuitive, but they are being a smaller sized population. Um, populations which are specialists, so only a specific type of food, like uh, pandas, which only eat eucalyptus. The quality of habitat, if it's polluted, uh, they're less likely to survive. Large mammals, which are a source of meat and therefore targeted by poachers. 
um, altruistic species who tend to stick together and tend to come to, to each other's aid when they're being attacked. Um, poor competitors, so species who evolved without predators and don't have those kind of pre-adaptive instincts to um, kind of fight. Um, and also the level of charisma is an interesting one that connects me to my next point, which is that tigers, for example, uh, which are kind of appealing to the public, they look um, cute, for lack of a better word, um, they're more likely to attract funding and attention uh, compared to, for example, lichen, who are equally as important, um, but don't have the same level of charisma as a tiger. And when we're talking about conservation efforts, and specifically in terms of biodiversity and in general, um, this ties into what we talked about in topic one, which are environmental value systems and the way that you apply value to a resource. Now, this image below is really great, and I recommend you guys to kind of study it. Um, but they show you how, as you move from direct use values, something that is tangible, like food or biomass that you can directly retrieve from an, an environment, um, it's much easier to quantify and assign an economic value to than something like existence value. So uh, the, the right of a species to exist in and of itself, um, the, so the fact that you wouldn't want a species to go endangered, or bequest value, so the value for future generations. Um, and you can base arguments on conservation of biodiversity on several domains from um, aesthetic, ecological, so you know the carbon cycle, the nitrogen cycle, um, economic, ethical, and the social justifications as well. So that's all I have to tell you guys about in terms of topic three. As always, make sure to check out our website to find out how you can get some tutoring from us. Um, but other than that, I will see you in topic four.